Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching today's video. We've got a really cool piece of gear that I'm gonna show you today. Go over a little bit, review it, give you my thoughts on it, and see whether or not it's maybe something that you might want to purchase and use for yourself. On the market today, there is a lot of different wood-burning stoves, camp stoves, foldable stoves, you name it. There's all kinds. They've been around for a long time. They're super handy. Um, I've got more than a few and I've got buddies that are collectors of them. But something came across on, of all places, my timeline on Instagram that I would kind of never had seen before. So I looked into the company and saw that it was a, a relatively new company and the product that they had was, was pretty cool. I thought it was a, a really good design. I thought it was something that it was very handy it could be used in multiple situations and so i reached out to them we communicated back and forth a little bit and they offered to send me out one of their models to use in a test and i told them uh, i'm very honest with my feedback i don't cut any corners um, especially if i'm not paying for it you know i feel obligated to give you my honest review of it and i'm going to use it for a little while before i give you any of that feedback i want to make sure that i've kind of learned the ins and outs of it and figured out exactly what I think about it. So here we are. What we have is the Oatsy Adventure Gear Flat Pack Grill. Now, there was a misprint on the packaging here. Uh, it says Spark, that's their smaller model. They actually sent me out their largest one, the Ember. So we'll go over the specs and the details here in a second, but right off the rip, the case that it comes in, very well made. Uh, it's Cordura material nice stitching and it's it's pretty easy um, it's not that thick in diameter and honestly it just kind of slides down the back of my day rack like what you saw when you unzip the carrying case for the flat pack grill regardless of whether you have the ember or the spark which is a smaller version of this you'll notice that it comes in five separate pieces there's really nice instructions that come with this, uh, clearly showing you how to put it together, and then some tips and tricks on the back side of it as to what you should do before you go out with it, and uh, future preventative things and maintenance and whatnot. You can see with these side pieces that there's two different cutouts, uh, different angles. One is more upright and one is more uh, lean back and less steep. So the one that's more upright is where the backing goes into that has all the different slot adjustments for the grill. And obviously the other one is the front plate that slides down at more of an angle. And that'll give you the framework of the grill. And it's very sturdy. Uh, it, it goes together really nice. I didn't have any problems with it. And then even now, after using this multiple times and having it under heat, it, it hasn't warped uh, much at all, if any. And it all still fits together very, uh, very securely. Other grills in the past or other... Uh, packable stoves will sometimes be exposed to heat and they kind of warp and it's really hard to get them back together but so far i think the thickness and the gauge of the steel uh is is helping this keep that from happening you also have uh, these essentially kebab sticks that have nice little grooves on the side walls of the grill to put them in and you can actually rotate and they kind of lock in place um, nice flat big handle to grab hold of and it sticks out far enough outside of the heat that it, it doesn't get too hot and uh, you have more than enough room between the two notches to put food on and put both of these on there uh, after you raise the grill up to maybe uh, sear some meat or get your vegetables cooked or whatnot so as soon as I got this and I opened it up you know I hadn't fired it up or anything but I just started kind of looking over the design of it because that's really what intrigued me the most about the way that this is set up. Obviously, it's it's heavier than a lot of your packable uh, or foldable wood stoves that we've gotten so used to carrying for camping and hiking and bushcraft, whatever. But it to me, it has a nice little role because if you're willing to carry that weight, you essentially have a portable fire pit or portable fire ring here. And you know, it's nothing, it's nothing huge. You can make a big bonfire, but it's more than enough to put cut pieces of wood and and have enough warmth to uh to hang out around it especially an area kind of like this where it's beachy and sandy maybe for the day um and leave it in your vehicle and you always have a way to to cook food um you could easily get a fireproof barrier or ember barrier and even cook it on the back of your tailgate of your truck uh, so it's definitely more tailored towards the car camping um or maybe day height kind of stuff uh unless you know 
you're willing to carry it. So the weight right off the bat was something I noticed. This is the largest version and it is the stainless steel version. They have two different kinds. They have a carbon steel and a stainless steel. Uh, they sent me this. I didn't get to choose whether or not I wanted this one or that one. And they told me that they were gonna send me the biggest one. So, which I was kind of excited about because stainless steel doesn't rust. Uh, it's, it's easier to clean up. And uh, overall, I've noticed that it handles temperatures a lot better uh, when it comes to these foldable grills. We'll go ahead and discuss what I think are the cons to this uh, product. So the weight could be a con for you if it's something that, you know, you're an ultralight backpacker and all you want to carry is titanium and you don't kind of see the role for this, honestly, which I would just suggest that you just don't purchase this if you know that it's going to be too heavy for you. But the other thing that kind of concerned me was what kind of weight could it handle? And what I mean by that is if I'm going to say that it is a car camping or day hike kind of piece of kit, most of the time when I think of car camping, I do think of uh, heavier items. So a lot of times if I go to an outdoor event or gathering and I'm going to be camping out of my car, I have no problem uh, walking to my truck and pulling out cast iron and cooking on cast iron, especially around a big fire. I know I can do some coal cooking and get some, uh, some really good food cooked up that way. So I did some testing at home. It was a little bit more controlled and I didn't have to carry it all out here. So what I did was I got my largest cook pot that I own, which is I think the largest zebra pot that's made, filled it up with water and put it on the grill. And you can see that I tried moving it into different positions up and down the back of the grill where you're actually up off the fire to kind of help your heat management. And it works with the large zebra pot, but I am definitely not comfortable. There's a lot of flex. And that was kind of my initial concern about uh, the design of it is these two tabs that are plugging into the back plate of the grill are the only thing supporting the weight. If you, if you put a, a large T-bone steak on there, it's gonna be fine. You can tell that you know it would more than easily hold that up because it's still holding up the large bush pot full of water. So the next thing that I did was I got the heaviest piece of cast iron that I own, which is this Dutch oven, and I put it on there. And when it's in the lower position directly over the, the, the coals, it's fine. Uh, it supports it, there's no flex, it's more than sturdy enough. The framework and the way that these are made, uh, they're, they're perfect. But when you go to move it up the back wall of the grill, it flexes so much that it wants to slide off the front. So, with that said, I like solving problems, not just telling someone they have them. I got to looking at it and realized a simple solution to this could be to make some sort of support that goes from the handle down to the front plate that's more of an angle. And what I did was I carved uh, a couple of seven notches in this stick and faced them the appropriate way and voila, it's now a support beam. Now this is just a quick fix and it's an example to show uh, what could be done, I guess from OTC to remedy this. And essentially with that, you could put whatever amount of weight you want to on this because it's got that front support that's holding the grill. Um, but it's, it's definitely the only issue that I've, I've found with it is if you overload the weight of that adjustable grill, it'll start to flex so much that you know, I'm, I would be worried about it either bending those tabs that plug into the back or, you know, your whole cook pot or cast iron, Dutch oven, whatever, just slides off the front of it. So it's definitely not made to support heavy weight as you move it up the rungs of that back. But with that little fix, uh, it, it would be pretty simple to just manufacture a piece that you could throw in and it wouldn't add any weight to it, essentially with your bag and you could just plug that in and pop it underneath it to kind of support it. So those are really my only cons with this product. Uh, the weight, if that's an issue for you, and again, I would just say that maybe you're wanting to use it for the wrong reason. And then the stability as you move the grill itself up those rungs, which I think is an easy, is an easy remedy, especially with the way that the handles are cut out on the grill plate and that bottom piece, there's there's an area there that you could clip something onto or or figure out a way to like notch it, a piece of metal to notch and rest it. Other than that, it, it it's actually a really cool piece of gear. Um, the uses with it 
are are far beyond uh, other grills this size that I've seen. Most of them that I've seen either just fold out and just have a standard grill plate and that's it. There's really no adjustments as far as being able to raise and lower your food um, or even a, a pot of coffee, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. Um, and it, it allows you to actually put kebabs uh, in the framework of the grill and they kind of lock in and you can rotate them. So that's super cool to me. Let's stop the rambling. Uh, I've talked as much as I want to about it. I'm gonna get this thing fired up and I'm going to uh, make some coffee and uh, make a cup of oatmeal. I didn't bring any food with me uh, to cook out here. <laughs> I was being lazy and I honestly just am not that hungry this morning, but you get the idea uh, what you could cook on this. I mean, literally anything, especially, you know, you throw in a skillet or a small fry pan, man, money. We have the flat pack grill all broken down and I've got it spread out so it can cool down and I've got the fire put out and buried. And now I'm gonna enjoy my coffee and my oatmeal. So that was a really hot fire. It did, uh, I will say it did have a little bit more of uh, a little bit of warping on the middle of the grill. And looking at it, I think there was a lot of wood piled up right there and that was the hottest spot of it. And after moving it around, I actually kind of saw it start to uh, straighten back out. So it's fine now. It came apart really easy. There's no, you know, anything broken on it or whatever. Uh, I just think I got it super, super hot, um, which is fine. I mean, it, it, it obviously handled it. With that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Go check them out. I will put a link in the description below as to where you can find them and uh, their social media. And uh, other than that, Make you a cup of coffee, get outside, and enjoy the woods. Cheers.